this is really getting at this idea of how do we face things in the most loving way without compromising. And you were saying like detach, how do we truly, or if it's a detachment or if it's something where we come into alignment with God, how does that occur? And I would say that in A Course of Miracles, Jesus has the topic of true empathy and false empathy. And he says this probably this distinction between true empathy and false empathy is will be one of the most difficult distinctions to really come clear on because it's so mixed up in this world. You know, all of us have come from a sense of wanting to be helpful, wanting to be altruistic, wanting to help people, mm -hmm. and then finding ourselves in very much conflict from mm -hmm. trying to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Whether it's with a relationship where we're trying to be helpful and we go, where, where did I step off here and get into this much conflict? I just was trying to be a, a nice person and be helpful and then I stepped off into the darkest of pits and I didn't even see it coming. And true empathy would be staying with what's real and true, staying with the Holy Spirit, staying with the Christ in your mind. False empathy would be Biting off into the error, trying to get out there and be a good fixer, be a good rescuer, be a good saver, you know. Or like some of you have seen the Matrix trilogy, uh, the, the second, in the second movie of the trilogy, Neo actually finds himself with the architect. And the architect says, you know, the door on your right leads to the source, and the door on your left leads back to Trinity, and the matrix. Mm. And he doesn't even pause to pray, he doesn't take a moment to reflect on what's offered him. He immediately goes for Trinity yeah. and the matrix. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even give the source a nod, <laughs> or mm -hmm. even a, a possibility. If you ever find yourself in your mind and the architect gives you a choice between the source and the matrix, don't hesitate, go for <laughs> the source. I'll tell you, that will that will end the, the conflict completely. But he ends up, he goes back to rescue Trinity, and then he finds himself unconscious. The sentinels knock him, it's very interesting to find out what happens when he makes that choice. That's what we call false empathy. Recently, I was down in Mexico, and I was doing a gathering in Guadalajara, and we, I got to know all the people by name, and there were two Jesuses in the audience. I never get one Jesus even, but I've got, I think, how many years have I been doing this and I've got two Jesuses <laughs> You mean now. their name? Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, okay. two Jesuses <laughs> there. And they're both from, uh, one was from Monterey, I forget where the other one was from. But the one Jesus was in a, was in a very tortured uh, state of mind and he, I could just feel, he was pouring out to me, please help me with this question, with this conflict that I've got going on. I'm, I'm begging you, please. Help me. And it was one of these false empathy versus true empathy things. Some of you know, like in the Spanish culture, the, the family, how strong the, the family concept is, you know, do anything for your children, your parents, you know, to the, you know, even if you feel like it's total hell, do it anyway. <laughs> because, because you have to. You know, blood is thicker than water and it's kinship and it's all that. Well, this was kind of what Jesus was in distress. And his, his wife was there too, Jesus and his wife. And what it was, was they had, they had, they had a, a married son who was back living at home. And basically was doing whatever he wanted to do in their home. He's a grown married son in the home and just doing anything. If he wanted to drink, if he wanted to do drugs, it was whatever he wanted to do. So on the one hand, this is a married couple that's gone, it's, their whole lives are being thrown up like tall salad because they're, it's right in their home and they come back to that and it's very, it's very, very difficult and intense for them. And on the other part is they're, but he's my son, you know, what, what can you do? In your case, you know, you have a home, you, you opened your home for this boy, but then when the mother wanted to, to come in, you know, you were like, hmm. No, that's, that's not my guidance. <laughs> it doesn't really feel mm -hmm. helpful for me and the, and the son and you, even the whole. Mm -hmm. And then you followed it and then you had to face whatever 
attack thoughts seem to come up into awareness. You know, mm -hmm. have to really face them. Mm -hmm. That's really what true empathy does. I, I told Jesus and, and his wife, um, I said, it's, it's okay for you to tell him to go. And the Holy Spirit just poured through with such mm. love and graciousness and gratitude, explaining very carefully that, that this is all about mind training, and it's, it's not about trying to make the form a certain way. It's about coming in your mind. Let the darkness up and, and let it face it in that way, but don't feel like you, you have to control the world or be the one that smooths things over, fixes things for people, makes it right, and so on and so forth. You know, I, I, the whole teaching, it was maybe like a 20 minute um, teaching in true empathy versus false empathy. And telling him, you have the Christ in you, you have the strength of God, you can do this, and everything. And, and all the while Jesus was, was just crying. And then both of them mm -hmm. were just like, gracias, gracias, you know, they could feel, they could connect with the energy, with the love and everything there, and were so grateful. And that's really what we're doing as we take this journey. The Course is really teaching us, Spirit is teaching us that we have to bring the illusions to the truth. We can't bring God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit into this world. You know, like say, I got a crazy life, will you please fix it? Mm. Uh, you know, and more like the Spirit's like saying, bring everything you believe about your life in this world, and, and time and space actually, to back to me and it will disappear. Bring, bring all of your crazy beliefs to the light and you'll see it was just, it was just your imagination. It was just this dark dragon, this, this crazy tiny mad idea that you had buried and kept hidden and then you kept trying to fix it in form, you know, trying to smooth it over, make it work out. Oh, it's going to get better. I'll just give him one more try. Just give her, give them one more try, one more, just and not one more try, and and okay, one more try, and you know after 25 years of one more try, and you're all stressed out and anxious, you know it's just been false empathy, false empathy, false empathy, and the Holy Spirit is patiently saying, come, come to me, let's do this with true empathy, let's bring the darkness to the light. So I I really feel that that you know both what played out before and in the dream. Um, that the Bible had taught us, let your yay be yay and let your nay be nay. And for some of us, we have associated yes with God and no is a bad word. But actually, not so to the Holy Spirit. If you authentically go on this journey, you're going to end up having the Holy Spirit say no to a lot of things. I've had to say no a lot in this parable. And, and I could feel the joy of the presence of the Spirit behind the nose. It wasn't a no in the sense of dismissal, there was no sense of rejection, there was no sense of putting down or wrongdoing. I remember the first time I started to practice with this was years ago, when I would be praying, meditating, I'd be getting into these deep mystical states, and my, my mother would come, would invite me to all kinds of different things, and the way the Spirit would come out would be, thank you so much for asking me, or thank you so much for including me, thank you so much for inviting me. The graciousness of the Spirit was always there with a thank you. And no, I don't think I'm going to be coming. Or, or sometimes it would even be, say, I'll, I'll just have to be in the moment, because <coughs> I was living more in the moment instead of doing so much planning. Even though that was the old way, everything is planned out days and weeks and months in advance, I was becoming, allowing myself to be more spontaneous and just let the Spirit guide me moment by moment, which seemed to be reflected back as, come on, just give me a yes or no. Sometimes I would have to say, I, I'll have to see and leave it at that and stay in the strength of that. And sometimes when the time came I would go and or not go, you know, I really started to become 100% intuitive. 100% in alignment with Spirit, so that took away all of the, the conflict. But I did go through that, what you're describing, where I followed what was, what truly felt was in my heart, and then I would see the role of the accuser rear up. Mm -hmm. I would see um, fear, doubt, guilt, you know, all these uh, accusations, you know, come. 
we're all going to have to walk through it. We just have to be able to see all that like you did with those characters that looked like the KKK. You could just kind of walk right through them. And when we really get into the strength of, of choosing with the Spirit, there's nothing that can, can threaten us at all. The fear leaves. You know, now I live this a completely fearless life. There's just no fear whatsoever. But it's just been allowing all the darkness to come up and say, yeah, I'm not going to hide and protect it. No, nope, it's not worth, I'm not going to use any kind of defense mechanism. I'm not going to stuff it down anymore. I'm just going to let it fully come up and, and really come and go. Go, to the, go back to the light.